Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for your main event of the evening. Helen from somewhere, from North Carolina, stand at 5 foot 8, 201 pounds, your king of swing, the god with the biggest stick in town, Dr. shoulder asking you for okay right saying hey uh i want you to know that life gets better uh i'm glad none of you did that to me tonight because it would have been really fucking bad uh but instead now we can just laugh right uh ironically enough though i have not been doing great lately uh yeah i don't know if you heard this or not but recently i was in a car wreck um this lady pulled out in front of me she pulled out literally directly fucking in front of me and uh, it was really funny because the first thing she said when she got out was, uh, she said, she said uh, shit, I thought I had more room than that. And I was like, where? Where did you see this fucking room? Me and her were face to face having a conversation. I said, you and I, like, we're close right now, but our vehicles were literally closer when you pulled out in front of me, you know? And, uh, funny, thanks. And uh, the story from here gets better, right? Uh, I found out that this lady was a delivery driver. For legal reasons, I'm not going to tell you the company, but I'm going to say this. Shaq is heavily involved. No, no. No, 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 no. Beats his ears. That's why we got Little Caesar, not the cooker bro. All right, let's score Chase out, please. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you knew this or not, but when you drive for a pizza company, you have to have a, spe a special delivery uh, insurance. Uh, this bitch did not have that insurance. She had normal people insurance. The same insurance I had. Uh, and I'm not going to tell you your insurance agency uh, for legal reasons, but I will tell you this. Their spokesperson is Flo. <laughs> And she's a real bitch. <laughs> yeah. Her little fucking uh, pizza delivery sign went flying when I hit her and almost fucking hit a pedestrian. It would have been funny, but it would have kind of been funny. <laughs> that way three people would have been fucked instead of just uh, me and her. Uh, the story continues to get better though. Um, so not only was she not insured by the right coverage, she also had 24 warrants for her arrest. <laughs> Pin me. Make sure you zoom in on that one. Uh, what that means is, uh, apparently, when, an award, when a warrant is pending, uh, you basically just get to live as a free civilian until it gets uh, proven guilty. So she's got 24 pending warrants for uh, nothing major, just uh, marijuana, fentanyl, cocaine, crack, and a bunch of fucking weapons that she had. <laughs> nothing crazy, right? <laughs> We've all got that in our backyard. <laughs> right? It can't just be me on this one. <laughs> so I wrote a conjoint letter to both her insurance agency uh, and her uh, pizza delivery place. I was like, look, uh, I've never been so happy. I don't want to go crazy and get a lawyer. Uh, but I would like you guys to do what I think would be right. So uh, I wrote them a letter and asked them to just refund me a little bit. Help help me out, you know? 
Uh, and I got a letter back, a conjoint letter back from both companies. It was really, it was really cool to see an insurance agency and a pizza place come together like this. They sent me one letter back and it was a picture of uh, Flo and Shaq flipping me the bird. <laughs> and under the picture, there was a letter from Flo that said, lick my clit, bitch. We don't know you shit. So like I said, Flo's a real bitch. Uh, but you know what? Thankfully, our insurance fucking covered it because our insurance is badass. Uh, and I was able to get a new vehicle. Uh, as a matter of fact, I got a funny story about that. Uh, before we went to the place where we got my new vehicle at, we went to a place called Lugoff Nissan. And I'm going to use your name because fuck that legal reason. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Lugoff Nissan. They're some of the slimiest, most bullshittery people you'll ever meet in your fucking life. Yeah. Uh, and my dumb ass would have fell for it. My dad's <laughs> smart ass <laughs> would have also fell for it. <laughs> But my motherfucking mama. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Jessica Carter. Yeah, yeah. She's a goddamn hero. She told that man to his face, the oh. salesman, who he bullshit us on a bunch of different prices. He bullshit us on some coverage, blah, 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 blah. So much of boring talk. He was bullshitting like a motherfucker. And my mom said, Motherfucker, you bullshitting. <laughs> Me and my dad was like, oh God, damn it. <laughs> the dude was like, no, 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 I'm not bullshitting. I'm not bullshitting. I'm not bullshitting. Let me go. You're mad. Thank you for being mad. Motherfucker. He was like, thank you for being mad. Let me go talk to my boss. I think I can get some more out of this now. He goes to talk to his boss and he goes back and he gives us the same fucking number. He slides that little motherfucking paper across his desk. My mom looked at it for a second. She said, <laughs> she slid the paper across the fucking desk back to him and said, y'all can kiss my ass. <laughs> hey, that's the most OG shit I've ever heard in my life. She looked at me in his eyes as if, y'all can kiss my fucking ass. She got up, she walked out. Me and my dad was sitting in the cubicle. It's a fucking cubicle with me and my dad and this other dude. He's a salesman. And I looked over at my dad, I was like, what the fuck do we do now? And he was like, I don't know, son. Uh, but the other guy from the, the dealership came over. He was like, look, uh, Mr. Carter, not me, my dad. He was like, Mr. Carter, come over here. We're going to talk some numbers. I think we can get you the number that you want. And my dad was like, all right, I'll talk to him. I told my dad before he left us. I looked at him. Mom and I walked out. <laughs> we buy this car if we want to. She's going to whoop both our asses. <laughs> so my dad goes and he talks to him. And then it's just me and the salesman in the cubicle. <clears throat> I have no fucking clue what to say to this guy. I'm like, uh, you like comedy? And he was like, uh, listen, this is tense. Why don't we go shoot, uh, why don't we go throw some axe? He had a little plastic axe throwing kit uh, in the dealership. I should have known he was bullshit when I seen that. And uh, funny things. And uh, so we, we go, I say, fuck it, let's go. Let's throw some axe. So we're throwing axe back and forth, me and the guy. I watch my dad walk out. My mom's outside breaking shit. Um, <laughs> So my dad goes outside and my mom, they get in my dad's truck and they pull around and I look up and I'm like, hey, I don't think I'm supposed to be in here with you anymore. <laughs> the guy goes, no, I think they're parking to come in. I was like, you don't fucking know my mom. <laughs> so my mom rolls the window down, gives me one of these. I was like, I gotta fucking go, bro. I can't fucking stay with you. I want to get home tonight. You know what I mean? And I get in the truck and uh, the first thing I said to my parents is, hey, I want that guy's ass and axe going if it makes you guys feel any better. My mama just says, listen, that motherfucker better be glad it wasn't a real axe in that goddamn dealership. Because <laughs> I would have cut his goddamn head off. Sure. My, mom's, uh, my, my mom's not a fucking comic, okay? My mom tells the goddamn truth. She did that shit. She can't cut that motherfucker's head off, all right? <laughs> However, we went down to we went down to uh, Lugar Ford, much better dealership, right? Big John with the ponytail set me up right. That motherfucker had my back. My aunt, don't get it twisted. My mom told him too. She was like, "Hey John, listen, I read through some bullshit, all right?" And John looked at me laughing. I said, "Don't laugh, right now, John." <laughs> John, you know the, the day we've had, all right? Just fucking get us our numbers. 
And we got numbers way lower than what's on their motherfucking website, all right? <laughs> Big John cut us a deal. So I gotta give a shout out to uh, Lou Golf Ford. Uh, and now I'm driving a Ford fucking Ranger. You know, Hell yeah. <laughs> you know it. So that's what's been going on in my life lately. I got a new vehicle. Uh, I've also uh, recently started doing historical reenactments, uh, one man shows, things in history that I want to put my own spin on. God bless you. I want to put my own spin on, right? Uh, so I'll show you one now. Sorry. Yeah, put a wiser. Put a wiser. Hell yeah, can you put? Where the fuck is it? This is a this is a can because I can do it. <laughs> can do it. Fuck you. <laughs> Don't laugh now, motherfucker. <laughs> We're good? Alright, thank you, cameraman. Shout out cameraman, by the way. Get my hand. Get my hand. It's a goddamn OG too. Here's my historical reenactment. That's all you get, motherfucker. Here's my historical reenactment. That was a reenactment of the Titan submersible. <laughs> Yeah! And I took it on the perspective of God. <laughs> who created the earth bucket, whatever it is. Just put that controller. See? Thank you. Yeah, my wife. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't think you got, you know what, fuck it. <laughs> fuck it, stop it. I got, in a minute, I'm going to need you, and I need you to be big, okay? You'll know, all right? All right, here we go. Uh, we got to talk about the bravery. Not of the fucking dumbasses that went down in a submersible. <laughs> well, we got to talk about the bravery of people who made jokes, right? That motherfucker went missing, and there were what the kids call memes and gifs and jokes all over the internet, right? Like within minutes of that thing. And they immediately come along and made all of our lives better. You know what I mean? Yeah. And because of those people, I can now come up here and make jokes about it and not worry about getting uh, canceled, as the Jason Alvin fans say. <laughs> <laughs> there was a song released earlier this week. It was by Jason Aldean, and it was a music video. I got it. A lot of people were mad about it. No? We didn't hear about it? I, I heard it. I heard it. I told you I heard it. You heard it? I heard it. Just, uh... What was the name of the song? Shut up, Buford. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I knew a guy that tried that in Buford. It was called Pedophilia. Yeah. <laughs> It's such an easy joke, it always gives a big rest. Anyways, um <laughs> Anyways. There were a lot of uh, there were a lot of sponsors, right? With this uh tight submersible. A lot of people that funded it, a lot of people that uh, made this thing go down, you know? <laughs> and uh, one of the biggest sponsors they released was a series called Captain Crunch. <laughs> Which is funny because that was also the name of the Captain of the Submersible. <laughs> there was a young fella that went on that submersible. Uh, he took a Rubik's Cube with him. Uh, and his entire purpose for going on this submersible was to go down to the bottom of the ocean and break the world record for solving a Rubik's Cube at the bottom of the ocean. So he literally went to the bottom of the ocean to break a world record. Uh, but instead he broke every bone in his fucking body. <laughs> in regular <record> time. <laughs> That's funny. I was a little nervous about doing submersible jokes this early in the show. I knew that one error, one crack in that joke would have really just made the entire set implode. Because <laughs> the submersible imploded. <laughs> Um, I knew that one, I mean, just one small error would have really made this entire show just sink to the bottom, right? <laughs> because of sink, you get it. <laughs> but instead, I'm actually smarter than a billionaire, uh, which would be a funny game show, by the way, right? Uh, Could you imagine turning on your TV and you see, it's time to play, are you smarter than a billionaire? First question, would you take a tin can to the bottom of the ocean? <laughs> no? All right, you win. <laughs> Let's tell him his prize. It's air forever. Because <laughs> <laughs> they get to breathe. What? <laughs> no, no, but you, 
felt really confident in yelling at him. <laughs> I want you to say it again. Everyone would be quiet and action. <clears throat> I, I, uh, I said, because they, uh, they, they get to breathe? That fucking sucked. Anyway, uh, <laughs> who cheered for this fucking cameraman earlier? <laughs> <laughs> Situations like the tight submersible really made me miss Barack Obama's president. Uh, uh, oh, God. He was a black president. Uh, fucking racist son of bitches. Right. Yeah. A bunch of white people in here, that's really not fair. Brittany. Hey, I see your hat. I see your hat. I see your hat, Brittany. I like it, really. Yeah. Brittany, if you wear the punch. white people. Woo! She has Amazon eyelashes, too. If you. If you, if you wait on the punchline. Why people buy those? If you wait, Brittany. I'm sorry. If you wait on the punchline. Oh, okay. I bring it back to pro black people. My black cousin does. That's my uncle, motherfucker. What is that goddamn family? Thank you, Unc. Unc, U N C, Unc. That's a black thing, you guys will get it. Oh, hell yeah. Situations like the Titan Submersible really made me miss Barack Obama's president. Let me tell you why. That motherfucker went missing five minutes later, Barack Obama would have come out. He would be like, oh, listen. This situation uh, with the submarine. Uh, it's fucked up. And I know that's a terrible Barack Obama impression. I just really love that idea of Barack Obama going, uh, uh, it's fucked up. See, situations like the tight submersible really make me just, Donald Trump is president. Don't fucking say shit. Please. Situations like the tight submersible won't really make me miss Donald Trump as president. Donald Trump would have dove into that water head first, <laughs> grabbed that submersible by the pussy, and drug it up to the shore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. In instead, we got Joe Biden. I think there's a nickname for him. Uh, people call him Sleepy Joe. I don't listen. I, I don't participate in that, all right? That's our president. That's what people call him. So Joseph Biden, uh, he didn't really say much about this uh, Titan Submersal. That's his full name, it's funny. They didn't really say much about us, uh, this Titan Submersal, right? He, uh, he, he, so I don't really have a, a Joe Biden submersible joke. Uh, but I do have a Joe Biden joke. Ready? <laughs> it's hilarious. Let me say it. And then... Uh, Joe Biden takes the stairs like a bisexual. Oh. Quick pause, quick pause, quick pause. He goes both ways, falling up them and down Because <laughs> <laughs> he fell up the stairs. You get it. That's enough submersible talk. All right, we've wasted way too much time on that joke. I, uh, I recently pissed off my ex-girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, by surviving that car crash. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I sent her a text message and I said, uh, hey, I just want to let you know that I just thought about you. Fellas, take notice, okay? I said, hey, I just thought about you. She replied back, oh my God, that's so fucking sweet. I just thought about you too. And I said, yeah, I, uh, I just drove past the cow pasture. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still moving on. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, she was a big sports fan, my nice girlfriend. I mean, she thought sports were okay. She was just big, like in a physical sense, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I used to take her to sporting events, but I'd always make her wear a blue and yellow shirt. We got into restricted areas because they thought she was a Goodyear blimp. <laughs> I took her to a, I took her to a NASCAR race. Right. I made him wear like a Dale Earnhardt Jr. number eight Budweiser t-shirt. Fuck yeah! There we go. You were allowed on the first one. Way to go. <laughs> Fuck that one up for me. Uh, they let us into the infield because they thought she was a car hauler. <laughs> <laughs> Obesity. <laughs> That's the joke. Uh, and I know what you're thinking, Dante, how did you fit so many fat jokes into this set? It's simple. I just asked her to walk outside. <laughs> That's fucking enough, okay? 
No more fat jokes. That's enough to have the feminists mad at me, but they're not ready to cancel me yet. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I go at war with feminists all the time. Uh, a lot of feminists are always like, oh, he disrespects women. Oh, whatever. <laughs> which, uh, <laughs> which I find to be ironic because I consider myself to be a feminist. Um, as a matter of fact, I voted for Hillary Clinton. <laughs> of course, that was in the ugliest first ladies of all time poll. <laughs> I still fucking voted though. I got a little sticker, said I voted, had a picture of her old ugly ass on the front right there. <laughs> Let me chill out though because I know that the clips have been known to, you know, people. So, uh, so Bill didn't do it. But I know people are not comfortable with uh, submersible jokes and political jokes and uh, feminist jokes. We'll move on. Uh, I'll tell you a quick funny story. After all, this is a comedy show. Yeah, it is. I thought. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so recently, my friend Drew, uh, he lost his grandmother. <laughs> <laughs> She died to death. She, uh. It's <laughs> funny. She was old as fuck. <laughs> and because she was old, because she was old, she fell and she hit the temple of her head on the corner of a desk. Directly on the fucking corner. Um, which is funny because when they found her old, lifeless body. <laughs> Because she was dead. <laughs> they found her old and lifeless body. They found she had marijuana in her system. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so naturally, they labeled her death as death as blunt force trauma. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done drugs. <laughs> that was a little joke for the first responders in the room. Raise your hand. Fuck off. I'm just kidding. Uh, she, uh, she, she died. She hit a temple of her head uh, on the corner of her table. It's really fucking sad. And I know you feel bad for Drew right now. No, I is. Absolutely not. Oh. <laughs> I gotta edit that out because Drew will beat your motherfucking ass. I'm hurt. He might. He makes a light bulb. So I know you feel bad for Drew right now because he lost his grandmother, but I want you to know that Drew told me he didn't give a fuck. He said, fuck my grandmother because she didn't leave him in the wheel, which is fucked up because she left me in the wheel and I never met the bitch. <laughs> she left me an old iPod touch, like the first ever one they come out with, right? Uh, so naturally when I get it, I turn it on and I download it, Temple Run. <laughs> Like how she ran the temple of her fucking head in her desk. <laughs> but it's old, it lags, you know what I mean? It's, a, it's an iPod Touch, the first one they ever come out with. It lags, right? So I need a new one. So I'm thinking about, I'm thinking about pushing his grandfather over so he can leave me an iPad in his room. <laughs> then I can download Temple Run 2. <laughs> twice the temple, twice the run. <laughs> Like how they both would have ranked fuck it. <laughs> I know that jokes about death are, are pretty uncomfortable, so I, you know, especially when it comes to other people's families. So let's move back to my family. I'll talk about my family. That seems to be what makes people most comfortable when I'm on stage, right? So I'll talk about my family. I'll talk about my great uncle. Um, my great uncle was a chef. He was a phenomenal chef. He cooked the best fucking meals. They were so good. I was so proud of him. Uh, he was a chef. And uh, he was also a pretty big pedophile. <laughs> I found that one out the hard way. <laughs> so he was a chef. And his wife, my great aunt, she was fucking forgetful. <laughs> the dumb bitch had Alzheimer's. <laughs> so she always forgot every fucking thing in the world, right? And I don't know if you've ever had someone with Alzheimer's in your families or if you've ever had a pedophile in your family. Uh, raise your hands, just kidding. <laughs> but every Christmas, every Thanksgiving, every major holiday goes exactly how you think it would go. You know what I mean? Uh, but I do remember one time, my uncle, he, uh, he told my parents, he was like, he convinced them, he was like, hey, listen, 
you should go on a date night and let Dante stay at my house. That's funny. Uh, let Dante stay at my house. Y'all go on a date night. Y'all have fun. I'm going to teach Dante to cook. Uh, and then next weekend, when y'all come, y'all can go on a second date night, and Dante can cook you dinner, and that'll be your date night. And that sounded really good, right? I keep painting this beautiful lie. It was really good at painting up these scenarios to look really fucking good and believable. It was good at painting these scenarios and at painting my face. Oh. With calm, God damn. <laughs> he motherfucker. <laughs> Because when a guy jizzes, <laughs> and he jizzes on someone's face, he calls it painting their face. Fuck it, whatever. Okay. So uh, he was good at painting these stories and nothing else, apparently. So he paints the story, he tells my parents that. And on paper, that sounds like a really good idea. You know what I mean? Dante's going to learn how to cook. He's going to cook for his parents. It's going to be a great fucking time. Uh, except for when we get to his house, there was no goddamn groceries in his kitchen. There's no meat, there's no vegetables, there's no spices, there's no herbs. There's a sign on the kitchen that says no entering. And that's because all the entering that was gonna be done that weekend was into me. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Trauma. <laughs> I'm really learning about this crowd tonight so far. <laughs> so he entered into me multiple times that evening. You can laugh, I'm cool with it. And the only person that I had to call for help was fucking forgetful Felicia with Alzheimer's. And every time I told her what that man did to me, she said the same thing. She said, oh my God, I'm calling the fucking police. But she had Alzheimer's, so every time she dialed 911, by the time she had that second one dialed, she forgot why the fuck she was calling. Because she had Alzheimer's. I could get a Venn diagram if that would make it easier for you. It'd make it easier for me. Uh, that wasn't, I, I know a lot of people are feeling bad for her, right? She's got Alzheimer's, I'm making fun of her. It's fucked up, right? Uh, it's fucked up, you get it. <laughs> um, I want you to know, though, that my great aunt was also a racist. Okay, so I don't want you to feel as bad for her. As a matter of fact, she forgot who I was all the fucking time. So when they told her that little Dante was coming over, she was not very happy. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, one time I got locked in the bathroom at her house. I got locked in the bathroom. I was trying to get my way out. Don't worry, uncle was on vacation. He was touching other kids. That I think my sister. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, that's fucking funny. Oh yeah, little Dante gets fucking touched up and down. We're not gonna laugh, but Bree gets touched. Now all of a sudden, it's got them comedy special. Fuck y'all. I probably deserve. I'll be honest. I wore those little short shorts, you know what I'm talking about? I earned it, as the Republicans say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I got locked in her bathroom. I was calling for help. I was knocking on the fucking door. As I knocked on the door, she yelled out, Oh my God, who's in there? Who, who needs help? And I said, It's me, it's Dante. And she said, Fuck that. <laughs> I'm calling the police, motherfucker. Because she was racist. And, uh... I was like, well, you know, don't call the police, but it didn't matter. She called the fucking police. But don't worry. By the time she got that second one dialed, she forgot why the fuck she was calling. Because <laughs> she had Alzheimer's. Yes, she did. Is the Venn diagram coming or not? What the fuck is a Venn diagram? <laughs> 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 Jessica Carter, I love you. I want you to know that me to you, son to mom, that I love you. But I'm going to say this as a persona, okay? <laughs> Bitch, you don't know what a Venn diagram is? <laughs> what is it? That's when they changed my ass from two times two is four. God damn. <laughs> God damn. That's why I'm a comic and not a goddamn astronaut. Motherfucker. <laughs> 
Chug, chug. I'm Skip. You don't have to. I'm your friend. I care about you. Thanks, guy. I want to see you, like, you know. That's not the last time, though, that someone would be confused by my name. Uh, as a matter of fact, growing up in this uh, this area, uh, it's a very small area, and a lot of people, uh, a lot of people were confused by my name, right? A lot of people used to make fun of me because of my name. My name is Dante Carter, and uh, a lot of people were confused by that. I would hear things from students like, uh, "How do you have the blackest name in the world, but you're whiter than vanilla flavored mayonnaise?" Because right? <laughs> I'm pale. All right, but... They would say things like that, and uh, from, from kindergarten to 12th grade to my senior year, uh, I would get teachers on the first day of class. They would be like, uh, Dante Carter, raise your hand. I would say, here, I'm here, it's me, I'm Dante. And they would always go, okay, that's a good one, Paul, where's Dante? <laughs> but by the time that I graduated high school and when I went to college, I said, you know what, I'm tired of this shit. I'm going to get ahead of the joke. I'm going to beat them to the punchline. So my first day of college, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm, I'm, I know that I'm going to go in here. I'm Whatever class it is, I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to tell them a joke about my name. Because everyone has seemed to laugh about my name my entire life. Uh, so I ended up getting English 101. It was my first class, my first time in high school. So I go to English 101, and my professor set this shit up perfect for me. He was like, uh, he goes, hey, uh, listen, I want everyone to go around the room. I want them to tell us their name and tell us something we might not know by looking at them. And I was thinking in my head, oh, this is going to be fucking perfect. Spoiler alert, it wasn't fucking perfect. <laughs> it finally gets around to me. I stand up in English 101 and I say, hello, my name is Dante Carter. And you might not be able to tell this by looking at me, but I'm not black. <laughs> <laughs> That room was dead fucking quiet. <laughs> there wasn't a laugh. There wasn't a chuckle. Somebody finally behind me yelled out, that's racist as fuck, right? <laughs> And I remember thinking, as a racist person would, please don't be a black person behind me. <laughs> and sure enough, I looked around, and this dude looked like he should have been named Dante. <laughs> A black dude. Okay. <laughs> so he says that, and I, I know I'm fucked at this point. I, and my class was like 75% black people at that time. Uh, I knew I was, you know, it was an uphill battle from there. Uh, to be honest, I haven't seen that many black people since the Jason Aldean release party. <laughs> <laughs> I should have tried that joke in a small town. <laughs> That's not fucking working tonight, is it? All right. God damn. Thanks. Jason Aldean released this fucking song for no reason now. Because I was like, you know, he released this song, people are pissed, I'm going to make jokes about it. I'm going to make a big laugh, everyone's going to have fun. Uh, and now I've told this joke a couple of times, no response. And I've learned that there's no point in this song now. So now I'm mad at the song too, just to let you know. <laughs> you guys have contributed to the boycott of Jason Aldean today. <laughs> I don't want everyone to know that. They're pissed off. I don't know if you've ever tried to convince an entire room of people that you're not racist, uh, but once they believe you're racist, it's really fucking hard to, to convince them otherwise, right? Yes. Uh, see? <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if this is the agreement we needed right now, but uh, let's just move forward, okay? I would come to class and I would say things like, hey, did you guys catch the Lakers game last night? Uh, and they would go, oh yeah, no, black people, we just catch every basketball game on TV, right? <laughs> but no, I'm a Lakers fan. Papa John's, right, with Shaq, they're my favorite fucking pizza company. <laughs> <laughs> Call back. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they didn't believe it. I would come to class and I'd say, hey guys, Lil Wayne released the album last night, did you hear it? And they'd be like, oh yeah, no, black people, right? We just, we just hop on every album that every rapper releases as soon as they release it, right? <laughs> And the thing is, thanks Bree. And the thing is, is I'm a big Lil Wayne fan. Like Lil Wayne is one of my favorite artists. So like I couldn't even talk about things I like. I love the Lakers, I love Lil Wayne, and now I can't even talk about them because they think I'm racist. And I would try my best. And I'm like, you know what, I've really got to convince these people that are not racist. What would be a good first step? Probably not calling them these people. <laughs> 
is they don't enjoy that. Uh, but finally, my knight in shining armor came along. Uh, I met this guy, who was a black guy named Hugh. He was a black man from Baltimore, and he was cool as fuck. I met him in college, and uh, me and Hugh, we instantly become friends. Hugh would invite me to come to events with him. We went to events, we worked on school projects together. We had a lot of fun. And then Hugh invited me to come to a soul food cook-off, right? And uh, this soul food cook-off is excited for, but you have to register online. So we registered online, me and Hugh. Uh, he put our names into the system. All the people that went through, it was a really good time. Uh, so then we show up to this soul food cook-off. There's a black lady working the, uh, at the front gate. And Hugh walks up to her and Hugh goes, hey, uh, Hugh and Dante's here. We need our name tags, right? So she fucking gets the name tag, she prints them out. She gives Hugh the name tag Dante and gives me the name tag Hugh, right? <laughs> so I naturally say, Thank you, God damn. <laughs> this bitch is so confused as to why I'm as excited as I am that she confused our name tags. I walk up to her, I was like, you have no fucking clue how happy I am right now. She said, why is that? And I was like, listen, I don't want to go too much into detail, I just need you to come to my English 101 class and explain the joke for me, okay? <laughs> and uh, I remember specifically too, uh, there was this guy that was in my English 101 class and he was, he was not very happy with me. Uh, he actually ended up seeing me in the library with another girl that I'm in the high school with. And we were in another class together and we worked on a project together. And um, me and her was in there and she actually left her purse in there. Uh, so she left her purse and we both left and he picked her purse up and he brought it to English class that day. He said, um, he said, hey man, I just wanna let you know that your friend left her purse in the library. Uh, so I wanted to bring it to you. And I was like, you know what, that's really fucking cool of him. Um, he's a cool guy, so I'm going to get ahead of this situation, and I'm just going to ask him what he thinks, right? I'm going to ask him if he thinks I'm racist. Uh, so he hands me, he's, he's going to hand me the person, he says, yeah, I should let this, here it is. And I say, you know what, I got a question for you, buddy. And before I could ask him if he thought I was racist, he said, listen, dude, I didn't fucking steal anything out of the purse, I just wanted to return it. <laughs> so I didn't ask him. I already had my answer. <laughs> he thought I was racist as fuck. <laughs> and that was my freshman year of college. <laughs> That's not the last time I would be confused as a racist, though, which is weird for me. Uh, I also uh, manage a supplement store in town. Yeah, you do. No, no comment about that. No comment about that. We love it. For legal reasons, I can't say the company name, but I will say we live well. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. So I'm training this new guy in the store. I'm training this new guy in the store, and uh, me and this guy, you know, we're in there, we're talking, we're having a good time. And then someone comes in, it's a black, a black guy comes in, and he says, Hey, I'm looking for a protein powder. I say, Dude, we've got this chocolate protein powder, you're going to fucking love it. I sell him this protein powder, he walks out the door, and then a white guy comes in. This white guy comes in, he's looking for a protein powder. I say, dude, you're gonna love this vanilla protein powder. It's fucking good as shit. Go ahead and get it. He buys it, he walks out the door. Uh, when they leave, the guy that I'm training goes, uh, hey man, are these, are these suggestions racially motivated? And I go, no, fuck no, man. Sometimes when someone walks in the door, you can just tell what they're looking for. You know what they're looking for. You know what to give them, you know? And uh, then this Asian lady comes in and I go, hey, Give me one second, the sesame chicken protein's in the back. Let me just grab that <laughs> Turns out they were racially motivated. I will say this though, nobody fucking complained about their protein powder. Everyone loved it, no one returned it. And if you return a protein powder, you're a pussy. I guess that was a joke that you'd really only get if you worked in a protein store. <laughs> okay. All right. That's enough about uh, racism, though. There's enough jokes about that going on right now. Uh, let's move on to something more important. Um, there's an issue in our country right now that I think we should really talk about. Uh, and that's the fact that 99.9% .9 of Americans think that they have the most beautiful fucking baby in the world. <laughs> and I've got a bit of bad news to tell you. Your little ugly piece of shit is the <laughs> ugliest fucking thing I've ever seen. I'm sick and tired of giving these babies and these children special treatment, right? 
We want to we want to protect their feelings and make them feel good, right? We're like, oh no, I know they're ugly, but we're just not going to tell them that. We need to tell them that they're important to the fucking world. <laughs> Let me tell you something about ugly people. You're not fucking important to the world, okay? <laughs> when you're ugly, no one gives a fuck about your feelings, okay? My my suggestion is to pick up a talent or a trade like talent. God damn! <laughs> There goes that punchline. <laughs> I can't be mad at you, it's funny. You just follow me. Good with him, it went well. Um, of course, in talking about ugly children, I'm not talking about like my niece and nephew who are fucking gorgeous kids. I'm talking about the rest of your fucking children. <laughs> Who are ugly as fuck. <laughs> and the problem is that we just we let these ugly little children grow up and, be, and they become ugly adults. <laughs> and now they're fucking sensitive, right? And we let these ugly fucking adults grow up and then they end up shooting up fucking movie theaters, black churches, and schools <laughs> because someone tells them they're ugly for the first time ever. <laughs> Can I tell you something? <laughs> Dylan Roof. You've been ugly your entire fucking life. Don't take it out on other people because you're the ugliest fucking piece of shit. I was talking to this girl one time. Yeah, yeah. I know it's hard to believe. It is. Shut the fuck up. Who was that? Softy Sally talking? Shut the fuck up. Hey, get a hard on dick over here talking. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> I was talking to this girl one time, and she had an ugly fucking kid, right? <laughs> that motherfucker. <laughs> I uh, I was talking to this girl one time, right? I know it's hard to believe, and she had an ugly fucking kid. <laughs> And uh, she was like, hey, I want you to meet my child. I think that this is going to take us further in a relationship. I want to introduce you to my child. And it'll go great. I said, you know what? You're right. I'm excited to meet your child. I went to her house. Uh, she got her child under the fucking crib thing. She pulled the child out. She had a blanket on his head. And she was taking the blanket off. And she was going to show me. And as she was going to show me, I was in the middle of a conversation with her. I was like, uh. I was like, yeah, I'm so excited to meet your child. I think it's going to bring us together. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> what, uh, what's wrong with it? She said, she said, there's nothing wrong with my fucking baby, you piece of shit. And I was like, no, like, not, like, what's wrong with, like, is it autistic or something? But, but why does it look like that? And she said, she said, look, it looks fucking perfect. My baby's cute as shit, you piece of shit. To which I responded, yeah, it is cute. It's as cute as a Benjamin fucking button. That baby is so fucking cute.
Oh, 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 fuck that guy's loud, but why? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> you won me back over. <laughs> I love this crowd. I see you guys. What you say again? I see you fucked it up. All right, just when you when you, all right, if you're in the crowd, let me tell you something about a comedy show. <laughs> this is a free tip from me, a uh, comedian, to you, a um, viewer. If you're in a comedy show and you yell something out and you get a laugh that first time, shut the fuck up. <laughs> just take that laugh and be happy. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Now everyone be quiet because I gotta think for a second. Don't talk too loud because I might get my fucking head hurt up here. Alright. I said something about a uh, something about an ugly baby. Someone said that's why we get pussy. I fucked five of her friends. Well, I'm just kidding. Them bitches are ugly than the baby. You know what I mean? yeah. <laughs> One of them bitches is built like a capital B. <laughs> If you've never seen a capital B, it's bad. <laughs> and if you think that bitch is ugly, the second bitch is built like a capital D. <laughs> Charlotte! Charlotte! Shut the fuck up when I called David Crenshaw in here and she'll set you straight back there. <laughs> That's not going to the show. <laughs> Needless to say, it didn't work out with me and this girl. Um, she was not very happy that I thought her baby looked like the baby Grinch. <laughs> from the live action movie, The Grinch Stole Christmas. <laughs> and at this point, Joe Hunter's gonna put Baby Grinch in my hand right here. Hell yeah, I am. It's done, all right. Oh, 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 Your mama loved it, fuck you. Oh, 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 oh. You're related. Shit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that relationship didn't work. It had nothing to do with her ugly ass baby. It had everything to do with the fact that she's a cheating whore. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I think she's just lucky that that baby was not a fucking twin. Because had there been two of them, I probably would have took them out and did the, the, the towers back in the day. <laughs> And there's nothing that liberals. <laughs> and, and there's nothing that liberals love more than murdering babies. I mean, there's nothing that gets them hornier than a dead fetus or a fetus. If you guys didn't laugh so hard on that first bit, the last bit would have been the funny bit. But it's okay. A lot of people have, uh, a lot of people have told me that my stuff is way too dark. Right? Uh, they said that, um, Dante, you don't have to be offensive to be funny. As a matter of fact, after the last show, someone sent me a text message and they said um, that your show was good minus the homeless people jokes. It's not funny to punch down on those less fortunate than you. Um, so this next joke is for them. <laughs> Don't cancel me, okay? <laughs> this next joke is for them. 
What do <laughs> What does fishing and children's rights have in common? <laughs> in both, you won't get much accomplished with a sandy hook. <laughs> I wrote this show single. Wait. I wrote. There you go. Can you, Mama? <laughs> Mama. I want to take a sip again. Not yet. I'm gonna. I'm gonna step back. I'm gonna take a sip again. When I grab the bottle, my drink safe. No, what's your mom? Okay. <laughs> and then. Just just I mean, say it like in your normal. You can kiss my ass, boy. <laughs> For the finger, son. Okay. That's why you couldn't get your shit up, right? <laughs> you, know, that was good. you had a hard time reading hand signals. That's why you had to quit baseball. What is this Facebook name? Crash Bandicoot or something? <laughs> Some stupid ass shit. Hey, look, that would be really cool if you're like 14 years old, but if you're over the age of 30, grow the fuck up, piece of shit. Crash Bandicoot! Fucking dumbass, alright. When I say action, when I say action, Jessica. Mom, I wrote that joke when I was sober. <laughs> and those homeless jokes don't seem to fucking bad now, do they? Shots fired. I mean, not like like how the kids, you know, in, okay. <laughs> you know what? Uh, you know what really pisses me off, or really gets on my nerves. Uh, people that like hate participation trophies with a fucking passion, right? <laughs> like, listen, listen. <laughs> no comment. Please don't call my athletic director. I don't want to get fired. <laughs> What really gets on my nerves is people that hate participation trophies. And I, I, listen, I get like participation trophies are, they're annoying, right? They're not, they're not, they don't make a lot of sense. I get that, right? But like, I don't let that ruin my entire fucking life, right? Like we all know people who spend their entire lives hating participation trophies, right? As a matter of fact, the other day this guy posted on Facebook, he was like, oh, there's two things ruining our nation. I don't know if he shakes and like sounds like that, but if you've seen the profile picture of this guy, you would imagine him the same way. He's like, uh, I don't know, I don't know about you, but I think there's two things ruining this nation, and that's social media and participation trophies. Which is weird because he posted that on Facebook, which is social media. <laughs> we all see the irony, right? Yeah. I wasn't all on that. Okay. And I don't know about you, but I'm the type of person when I see some bullshit, I get mad, like really mad. I get more annoyed than I'm supposed to. Like it's one of those things that I'm working on in my life. Like I let things like that really dictate my life and I shouldn't, I know that. It's something I'm working on. I think it's the inner white guy in me that just really sees somebody else's bullshit and gets mad. It's like, uh, it's like when you see like a, a guy let his wife out of the, at the grocery store. And you're like, okay, we let her out. And she walks three steps to a scooter, and she's breathing heavy. She sits on a scooter, she takes a second, and she goes, <gasps> I need a second to catch my breath. And you're like, no, bitch, you need to fucking walk. That's how you got in this position in the first place. Yeah, fucking well. 
<laughs> but that's enough about my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because she's fast. <laughs> she wasn't when we were together. As you can tell by looking at me, I'm very fit. So my girlfriend was very fit at the time. And then we broke up because she cheated on me with a truck driver. And now she has to go, Wide load coming through. Every time she backs up. Enough about her. <laughs> but I was really annoyed by this guy's Facebook post, right? And uh, so I commented. Uh, I commented on his post and I said, hey, um, I think that there are a lot of things worse than participation trophies. I think there are a lot of things that ruin this world, ruin this nation more than participation trophies. Things like uh, sexism, racism, homophobia, uh, gender crisis, our split nation. Uh, Donald Trump supporters should make that their entire personality. Uh, Jason Aldean music. God damn, four fucking times. No. All right. Let me take you for a ride on the big green truck. I fuck with it, baby. I'm still chilling on the dirt road. You know what I mean? I don't give a shit. And uh, my personal favorite. Uh, cocktails with Bill Cosby. Those are things. <laughs> those are things that I think we can all agree is worse than participation trophies. That's what I come on this guy's post. And uh, I come on those on this guy's post, uh, and this guy comments back to me. This is an old fucker. He comments back to me. He says, um, "You're probably just a fucking liberal snowflake who grew up on participation trophies and knows no better." I want you to get off my Facebook, son. Yeah. yeah, that shit pissed me the fuck off. <laughs> this motherfucker got personal. First off, he's not my goddamn daddy. <laughs> my daddy's a bald, badass motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if you disrespect me, he will fuck you up, son. <laughs> this dude, this dude want to comment back. He wants to get personal. Uh, and I want to address the rumors right now. I did not grow up on participation trophies, all right? I fucking earned my Team Spirit Awards, all right? I was on that bitch clapping harder than any motherfucker you could fucking tell me. I had calluses on both hands, I was clapping so fucking hard. So I go to this guy's profile, and I'm looking for some dirt. I wanna piss this dude off. I wanna make this motherfucker cry. So I go to his profile. One thing about me, is uh, if you go low, I'm going one right under you, brother. Like, we going big, big dog, you know what I mean? So I'm going to Zeus' profile. I'm looking for like a dead relative, a dead child, something to really piss him the fuck off. Unfortunately, I didn't find anything. All of his kids are living there. But I did see one thing that I knew would help me win. This motherfucker was a Vietnam vet. <laughs> And just from looking at that, I knew that I had enough ammo to win this little Facebook war. <laughs> Unlike America, when we went to war with Vietnam. By the way, you can say what the fuck you want, but that was a goddamn war, all right? And this is how I know we got our shit kicked in. America goes, we're going to war with Vietnam. We got our fucking bell rung and said, you know what, it wasn't a war, it was a disagreement. <laughs> that means we fucking lost. Don't give up on me. <laughs> so I come in back to this guy. And I say, uh, hey buddy, um, every single fucking benefit that you've received from our government, every time that you go to a sporting event and someone gives you a standing fucking national anthem prayer, praise, right? Every time someone opens the door for you, every time someone salutes you, shake your hand and says thank you for serving our country. That is a big ass participation trophy. <laughs> because you got your shit kicked in. <laughs> now do us all a favor and shut the fuck up before I call my buddy Agent Orange over to finish the fucking job on you. <laughs> like you did to all of your little friends in Vietnam. And, shit. and listen, I'll admit, 
That was fucking harsh. I know. I know. That was harsh. Uh, and he didn't say anything back to me. He fucking lost. He knew he lost. 2 one oh, check the scoreboards, baby. <laughs> he knew he lost. He didn't say anything back. But there were a lot of rednecks who commented on it. A lot of rednecks were mad at me. Uh, I haven't seen that many pissed off rednecks since the Bud Light release party. <laughs> See, I go both ways. Not like my light goes both ways, but I go both, you know. So. <laughs> he doesn't say another motherfucking word to me, but his wife. She sends me a direct message on Facebook, and not like in a good way, you know what I mean? She sends me a direct message, and she says, listen here, buddy, I have half a mind to call the police and tell them that you have disrespected and threatened my husband, who's a Vietnam veteran. So I go to this bitch's profile, you know what I mean? I'm trying to find dirt on her, too. Fuck it. You go low, I'm one under, bitch. <laughs> I go to her profile, and the first thing I see, this bitch has Alzheimer's. <laughs> I say, you think you have one mind, half a mind to call the police, but actually, bitch, you just have half a fucking mind because you have Alzheimer's. <laughs> Secondly, go ahead, call the police, because you and I both know by the time you get that second fucking one dial, <laughs> you gonna forget why the fuck you're calling me in the first place. <laughs> Turns out this old ass fucking man and his old ass fucking wife are majority stockholders for Papa fucking John's. <laughs> and they sent a goddamn delivery driver hitman out to kill my ass. But guess what, bitch? She fucking missed. I'm still alive. My name is Dante fucking Clark